Earphones made this mistake before and it's made it again with the Earphone Free Pro 3. Namaste, we're DHRME, decibel hungry rabbits making echoes. We always loved the size and shape of the Earphone Free Pros and the level of compactness on the third generation is just off the charts. It is one of the most compact TWS cases we've ever laid our eyes on. Slipping it into a pocket, a breeze. Heck, even those weird little coin pockets can fit this case. Speak for yourself, they don't fit my... Oh, wow, it's really small. Yeah, and we love the attention to detail in the case. So many companies make buds that are difficult to remove from the case, <coughs> post. But Earphone actually has a little gap that lets you stick your finger in there and pull the buds out of the case. Such a nice touch. Speaking of touch, Earphone just pushed an update to these buds that can disable all touch controls. Although we don't know why someone would do that because Earphone's gone all out on these touch controls. From volume adjustments to play pause, ANC toggling, track switching, and even summoning your voice assistant. It's got it all. But here's the kicker, they let you customize everything in the app, on the left and the right earbud. And those earbuds should fit nicely into most ears. You get five sizes of ear tips and three sizes of ear hooks in the box. That firm rubber hook helps keep these buds securely in place. In terms of fit and comfort, these are a shallow insertion style earbud and they have an excellent balance of comfort and grip. Usually we're choosing one or the other, but earphones like, why not both? Yeah, we agree. And hey, for all you side sleepers out there, these might just be your dream buds. With the flat design that kind of blends into the pinna, the shallow insertion and the ability to disable accidental touches, you'll say goodnight faster than we can say, fuck mom. And the aesthetic, like we said, we really like how they almost blend into our ears. And these will hold up against sweat or a surprise rain shower with the IPX5 rating. No sweat. While on build, this compact case also has wireless charging on board, like the second generation as well as USB Type-C. <clears throat> Bose, Earphone claims that these give you seven and a half hours on the buds and 25 and a half from the case. But here's the thing, it's not clear what codec or noise cancelling mode they're talking about. So we did our thing and tested these at between 70 and 75 decibels with ANC on using aptX adaptive. We got just under five hours. For this size and price, we'd say that's acceptable. But maybe just turn off noise cancelling and add some precious minutes to that battery life. Because the Free Pro series has never been about noise cancelling. Right from generation 1, we always felt like noise cancelling was just a cool thing to print on the box. The thing is, we know that Earphone can deliver solid ANC like they've done on their Air Pro 3. But the Free Pro continues to be ordinary at ANC. How ordinary? We put it in tier C and in this day and age, we're not sure how to feel about that. I mean, it's fine if you have music on or if all you want is a little more than a passive seal. The Moondrop Space Travel, for example, is also in that range in terms of noise cancelling, but costs a third of the price. Luckily for us cyclists, we get a wind noise reduction mode too. The transparency is a bit better, thankfully. We put it in tier B, okay for a short conversation, but you're not getting AirPods levels of clarity or anything. There's also a fair bit of interference, like white noise when in ambient mode, kind of like waves on the ocean but it's signal interference waves. We found it a bit annoying in very quiet environments. It's much more comfortable in ANC, which is kind of a dull hum. Now, what wasn't available on the older Free Pros was Multipoint. Earphone's done a very good job of it this time around. Multipoint is available and works quite well. You just have to pause on the first device and hit play on the other. The cherry on top is that you can see the list of connected devices in the app, as well as connect and disconnect from said devices. If the earbuds are connected to two devices, you can't pull connection from a third one from the Bluetooth menu. What we did notice in our relatively short time testing these earbuds is that multipoint works better with two phones than with a phone and a laptop. You have to give the laptop a bit more time to adjust and maybe pause and play to get it working. We face some audio cutouts while using YouTube in a browser window on our MacBook, for example. Another blast from the past is a less positive one. You can use one bud on its own. You wear the left bud, you only hear the left channel. You wear the right bud, you only hear the right channel. The bud that is in your ear does not play a mix of left and right channels if the other bud is in the case. And while these may not have spatial features, they're not plain vanilla, no feature earbuds either. These games also offer a game mode for lower latency 
Then there are smaller features like find your earbuds by playing a tone. There's no wear detection, however, to play or pause your audio automatically. You wanna know how these do on phone calls? We thought you'd never ask about our popsicles, icicles, and test. Pop, pop, popsicle. Pop, pop, popsicle. Ice, ice, icicle. Ice, ice, ice. Test, test, testing. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. Overall, the mics sound okay, but the wind really interferes with the voice. We wouldn't say that these are the best for phone calls, but we did use them for a long period in quiet conditions and there were no complaints. The fuckman is reasonably satisfied with these controls for phone calls. You can do the basics like answer and hang up, but you can also change volume while on a call, which is kind of spawnant as we say in Dutch, because a single tap is to change volume, but a double tap hangs up the call. So lower or raise the volume too quickly and you can say, you can't mute while on a phone call and neither can you change the ANC mode you're in. So if you were in noise cancelling when the call came in, well, you'll be taking the call in noise cancelling mode. You can change the mode in the app, but not using a long press on the buds. The headlining feature is the aptX adaptive codec and Snapdragon sound. And yes, these buds can sound good, but there are a few issues to talk about here. The stock tuning, oh my god, that stock tuning. Now just look at this bass region here. If you like large quantities of bass, you'll be okay. It works surprisingly okay for certain hip hop tracks, but let's just say that we are thankful that Earphone has an EQ in the app. Out of the box, it's very bass heavy and the bass kind of bleeds into the mids. As you can see, the lower mid range is also quite elevated. The presence region is also very muted and that really makes these earbuds sound much darker and there's no counterweight to that bass bloat. And that's a shame because these drivers can do much better. We had to use the first party 10 band EQ in the Earphone Audio app and then things started sounding much better. We used this setting to compensate for the stock tuning. Earphones made this mistake before and it's made it again with the Earphone Free Pro 3. The Air Pro 3 also had a poor stock tuning when they released. They later released an update to fix it after all the reviews went out. Keep an eye on our X slash Twitter. If there's an update, we'll let you know and also update our frequency response charts on dhrme.squig.link. APTX Adaptive certainly helps with the resolution. However, the bass is still on the looser side and the treble can only be pushed so far. What the EQ changes didn't help with was the soundstage and imaging. The soundstage is very narrow, pretty much very close to my head and the imaging was kind of all over the place. Now, I really like how these buds sound overall and for this price and with this feature set, I would have no problems recommending them for people who are okay with tweaking the stock sound signature. For reference, how do these sound? The Edifier Neobuds Pro 2, these sound better. The Soundpeats Air 4 Pro, these sound better. The Soundcore Liberty 4 NC, these sound better. The Samsung Galaxy Buds 2, not much in it, but the Samsung sound way better out of the box. With enough tweaking, these sound better. The Noble Audio Focus Mystique, no, these don't beat those. But maybe we'll review those, let us know. Well, for the price of about $60, these are a no-brainer, but at $80, that becomes a bit more difficult to justify. You're then in the range of the buds we spoke about earlier. For sound, we think it's very close between the Samsung and the Earphone Free Pro 3 after tweaking the sound. And we'd actually give it to the Earphone, especially for busier recordings like Snipknot. For excellent ANC, we'd give it to the Earphone Air Pro 3 and the Soundcore Liberty 4 NC. And for an all-round package with physical buttons, we'd select the Jabra Elite 4. What a great time to be alive and to be in the market for sub $100 wireless earbuds. You've been having a great time watching. And we've been DHRME. Dewey. You want to know how these do on phone calls? We thought you'd never ask about our popsicles, icicles, and testing of the microphones. Yeah, important stuff. <laughs>